Uh, Mr. Wilmer, comment? Uh, suggestion, Mr. Chair. So as, as council or our committee will be aware, we were scheduled to uh, meet to, to consider the Arts and Culture Sustainability Fund at approximately four o'clock. Uh, representatives from the museum, the art gallery, and the symphony are, are now here and have been waiting for a little while. So uh, one of the options would be to uh, briefly recess to deal with that matter and then reconvene as, uh, as finance committee. Sure, and I would look to the clerk and let's, let's go ahead and do that. We'll recess and we'll give the clerk a few minutes to switch the committee settings. Okay, so we'll, we'll take about three or four minutes. Okay, let's, uh, let's get going then if we can with the uh, special council meeting. Um, <clears throat> welcome everyone and uh, thank you to uh, the three organizations uh, who are here. Uh, and I understand uh, while there's more here than are on my list from the museum, we have uh, Linda Faby from the Art Gallery, we have Shirley Medill, and from the Symphony we have Andrew Bennett and Chris Sharp. Uh, and uh, just uh, thanks to all of you for coming in. Uh, our delegations are here really to answer any questions uh, if that becomes uh, necessary. Uh, and we'll start off, I guess, with uh, Ms. DiDionato. Sylvia. Thank you. Through you, Mary Vrbanovich, we have a report coming forward today about the Arts and Culture Sustainability Fund, which is an annual fund uh, that is uh, granted normally in the... Uh, a little bit later in the process. For this year, we're looking to have uh, pre-budget approval for your consideration to ensure uh, cash flow for the three pillar organizations. Um, we also have uh, in the report mentioned a review which is regional about arts funding in general and the arts sustainability fund specifically. Um, so for that reason, we are also recommending status quo for 2015. And uh, with that, uh, we also have representatives here to answer any questions. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, any questions, Councillor Galloway Sealock? Yeah, I think my first couple are probably for Sylvia. Um, and then, are, do you want to take each art, arts organization separately, maybe? So um, other, like the questions of staff and then each arts organization? Is that probably the best way to go? Uh, sure, we can do that. Yep. Okay. Um, my question. Um, is with respect to um, the second part of the recommendation, which um, talks about the uh, almost $40,000 uh, subject to final budget approval. I get that it's subject to, to final budget approval, but we talk about uh, the, uh, the wording, emerging, emerging and mid-career organizations. What does that mean? The emerging and mid-career organizations, as have been uh, annually allocated in the past, have been distributed to the creative enterprise. So that typically has been the line uh, for that for those site, those groups, rather than the pillar organizations that are recognized. Right, I get that. Um, but what does mid-career mean? Oh, in terms of the organizations? Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, so, who are we uh, supporting when? Like, I get that the money's going to, right. to the creative enterprises, but. Through the mayor, uh, there's a balance between uh, the pillars that are here for uh, a longer period of time and haven't had an opportunity to establish themselves. <coughs> the uh, smaller and mid-career organizations uh, may have uh, the potential of becoming future pillar organizations. And I believe that the uh, Prosperity <coughs> Council and the reports that uh, were that came forward for the, to support the Arts Sustainability Fund felt that a certain layer of funding could be allocated to those groups uh, to assist in their earlier parts of their uh, growth as community groups. Uh, typically, they are uh, in the various um, emerging arts, may or may not be aligned with the traditional performing arts or the traditional visual arts. Okay, I think I'm just concerned about the actual words itself, mid-career. Okay. I think I have, that's where I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. I just think we may be able to find language that's um, a little bit more clear and whether it's mid-size organizations or, or what, I just think mid-career kind of um, leaves a lot open for interpretation and, and I think right. we could probably word something better than that. 
Um, my okay. second question then is with regards to page 1-3 um, in the chart there. It's talking about 2010 and that uh, the last, second last line in 2010 is that the, um, there's 20,000 that's still held by the city of Kitchener. Do we have, so I'm taking that, we, we still have ownership of those funds um, and we have no allocation for those funds, is that correct? Uh, through the mayor, I believe we can check on the exact status of that fund, but I, I imagine that still stays with the city of Kitchener. Okay, so would that be something that we can um, look at potentially putting either towards our grants or other arts related um, because we made that commitment for the the one percent, but uh, is that something that we can we can look at uh, utilizing in the near future? Through the chair, we can uh, look at, at, at the availability and how we can use that. Okay, I'd appreciate uh, an issue paper then on that for uh, final budget day. That's all my questions to staff. Okay, thank you. okay. <clears throat> Councillor Singh. Thank you, um, Sylvia. When we um, like focus on the per capita funding. It's more for clarity so uh, you know our citizens know exactly uh, proportionally what we are paying. Um, when we do have tier three grants, I guess, organizations like I'm just using it as an example like Neruda, there are two organizations that got funding through our granting process as well. And the reason I refer to that way is because we are now allocating additional 39,000 that's specific to those organizations. So why aren't we more clear showing the full total sum that we're giving out to arts or organization and only limiting it to you know the museum, you know the, the art gallery and the symphony, gives that impression that this is really all we're giving. You know we're only giving that one dollar per per capita, which isn't the case. There are significant monies that come out of our tier grants, and that's not to say I'm not even bringing the argument what we give to the center of the square, because that will const construe the figures even far more. So why not show that? It's fine, we should maybe continue paying what we do or to continue funding what we do through this, but why not show what we give out to these same organizations through our tier or our, our granting process? Uh, through the mayor, I think we, uh, we really do need to make some clarification around that entire consolidated uh, picture of funding and uh, through the regional review, uh, we should have a better chance of, of painting that picture more Could, thoroughly. Those are very hard numbers, so it's not, I don't, I don't think significant data has to be collected for it. That's, mm -hmm. We know what uh, we did last year and what, again, the, uh, the wants were for this year or going forward as well. Can we now for budget day know that? Uh, Through the mayor in terms of granting, uh, we could actually do that. Okay, that would be summary. really helpful. Yeah. So we know. Yeah. So our citizens know how much of, uh, of an investment is being made in this community. Thank you. Councillor Edmonton. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Sylvia, is there any, going to be anyone here from Creative Enterprise today? Through the mayor today, there isn't someone from Creative Enterprise to speak to this report. Okay, and if I have maybe about eight questions relating to Creative Enterprise, should I ask you or? Mr. Wilmer? Through the mayor, uh, I'm on the board of CEI, so you okay. can funnel those questions through me. Thank you. Well, then maybe I'll make a start, and if I run out of time, I can, I'll click back in. Um, looking at this report, are we dealing with $39,400? Through the mayor, yes. That's based on our estimated mid-year population for 2015, which would be 239400 and do we know if any arts groups will be getting this cash or does this money go to uh, Creative Enterprise for administrative costs? Certainly the only recommendation that's before you today has to do with the museum, the art gallery and the symphony. The rest of it is referred to budget day. In the past three years, we've paid, I guess, if my math is correct, it's about $78,000 plus to Creative Enterprise. Uh, Kitchener taxpayers have paid that amount of money. I'm still interested in knowing uh, if any of that cash is going to small arts groups, how many people are currently on Creative Enterprise payroll, do we have a chief executive officer? 
I'm not sure it's fair to ask you these questions, Mr. Wilmer. Brief, to briefly respond, CEI does produce an annual report. CEI has an annual general meeting. Councillors were invited to that meeting. Those are the types of uh, pieces of information that are available through, through those sources as well. There's, there are no secrets there. And, and Roger Farwell is the interim CEO. That's what I thought. I expected to see Mr. Farwell here today. So just to be clear to committee or council, CEI didn't make any request. The requests came from the organizations that are represented here. And so it's for, to, to assist them that we brought this forward, brought forward this report. I have absolutely no problem with uh, supporting money from uh, the city of Kitchener going to any of these core groups. I continue to have a problem with creative enterprise initiatives and so I will be opposing the amount of money that we're proposing to pay that group <coughs> in whatever form or in whatever uh, location I have the chance to do that. So, because I want to see these questions answered. Thank you. Just for clarification, the, the, the motion that we're going to be dealing with later on today only deals with these three organizations for right now. The remaining balance is going to be going to final budget day and we'll be dealing with th those dollars at 39400 then. Okay, just so that everybody's clear on that. Okay. No, I, I realize that, but it says it's subject to final 2015 budget approval. So I just want everyone to, to be clear on that. Uh, Councillor Fernandez. Thank you. I'm just going to repeat the same question that Councillor Galloway Sealock uh, gave you, and that was about who are these mid career organizations? You honestly didn't answer that question. You sort of gave us a, a roundabout. Uh, idea of what kind of it was, but she asked who these organizations were, and I didn't hear who they were. Uh, through the mayor, as far as I understand, the actual allocation for this amount is uh, is distributed more indirectly through Creative Enterprise rather than to any specific organizations. But I think it's possible for us to provide examples of those groups. Mr. Wilmer. To the mayor, or through the mayor, the, I think that if we're, what we're looking for is a definition of emerging and mid-career, it's anybody who's not a pillar organization. Because okay. we heard from the rest of the arts and culture community, what about us? And so the city of Kitchener made a deliberate uh, effort to say, yes, we will allocate money for the non-pillar organizations. And as our population grows year by year, that allocation grows. Okay, thank you for that. And um, I look forward to the issue paper on that $20,000 as well. Thank you. Councillor Yanetsky. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have no concern about the allocation to the uh, art gallery and the symphony at this point in time, but my question to you uh, pertains to the museum as to why are they getting 120,000 and not 40,000 like the other two organizations at this point in time? Uh, through the, oh, I guess, through the mayor, uh, we'll ask our CAO, it seems like you're uh, through, through, through the mayor, the, the amounts of 120, 40, and 40, respectively, were set uh, at the beginning of the Arts and Culture Sustainability Fund. I think it was based on the, the uh, needs estimated at that time to help these organizations become financially sustainable, and the dollar figures have not changed, as you can see, year by year. And the, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Wilmer, the dollars at the time were also based on the dollars that th they were getting from the all of the individual municipalities within the region that were contributing to those organizations. So it was looking at the whole picture. The, the split is different from one organization to the other, yes. yes. Okay, well, I, I appreciate that. So, uh, but, but based on previous years, they, they see what, how much they're getting uh, on an annual basis from each of the uh, municipalities in the area. Um, I mean, can't they, and this is just to get them going for the next two months, I would gather, wouldn't $40,000 be appropriate at this point in time as opposed to continuing on with 120? So I would suggest that's a question for the museum representatives. Okay, so we'll, we'll come to questions of the, of the individual organization representatives and okay. you can ask that question then. Okay. Uh, next up, Councillor Gazzola. 
Yeah, I have a number of concerns here, but uh, I'm not sure that they'll be answered today. Um, I, I question some of the financial statements that have been presented to us, and I'm concerned about the viability of some of these organizations. So I don't know. I have not had enough opportunity to uh, research it further. Uh, are, is this council at this time passing and ratifying the payout of $200,000? Is that what's happening here today? The intent of the item on before us is to deal with this issue at special council today because these organizations need to be able to, to operate. And uh, the request has been made of the individual councils. It was dealt with uh, at regional council uh, already in, in December and those dollars were approved there for them. And, um, and a similar request is before us uh, for consideration today, yes. Are these payments normally paid out in January? Mr. Wilmer? Through the Mayor, no, they're not. Normally they're paid out after final budget day. I think as, as uh, Sylvia has pointed out, there's two reasons that why this year is different. One is because it's an, uh, uh, the first budget after an election, final budget day is delayed by about a month. The second is because of the review that's going on, 2015 is in staff's recommendation a business as usual year. I have, I have a num uh, some questions uh, from, the, from the organizations. Okay, we'll come. You can buzz in again when the time comes. Councillor Davey. Thank you. And I'll, I'll try and be brief. I actually had a uh, very similar request as, as Councillor Singh with respect to the um, dollar per capita and the disservice we're doing by referring to it or some people in the community think that's all we're doing. Uh, I just wanted to add a bit. I mean, the the only thing I actually heard in, in terms of bringing forward more information was grants. I do understand there's a lot of uh, data kept by other municipalities. Uh, I'm not asking for all that, but I do want to make sure is that we include all of the same information that a lot of other municipalities include. So I mean that there should be, everything should be in there with respect to what we contribute to arts and culture, which includes the center and the square, the capital costs associated with the center and the square, um, everything we have in economic development, uh, that includes arts and culture, including staff salaries, uh, the Kitchener Studio Project, public art, and then the, the budget and the maintenance of those things, they all need to be in that uh, dollar per capita uh, figure that comes back. Uh, so I just ask staff again if they think they can accommodate that request. Um, not that it's particularly rel related to final budget day, but when they think they'd be able to come back with that information. I think staff can, uh, can put that together. I'm not sure of the the relevance of the economic development um, funding, but staff can deal with that well, when they... I would just point out that if we're going to be looking at a dollar per capita figure, my understanding is other municipalities would include, if we have an arts and culture coordinator, for example, their salary should count towards dollar per capita for arts and culture. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so through, through the mayor, certainly we can pull together that all-in picture, uh, and, and certainly it's, it's, it's in the millions of dollars that the city invests in arts and culture. The dollar per capita was, the ask was incremental spending. So if everybody can invest a, an additional dollar per capita, and so that's, that's really why we're in the range of two hundred twenty dollars to $240,000, that's our population. But it's certainly it's over and above the millions that we already put into uh, arts and culture. Thank you. Okay, so that uh, seems to cover the questions of uh, staff. Uh, so now I'll open up to questions of the individual organizations. And we have Linda Faby here from the museum. So Linda, if you want to come, f does, anyone, uh, does anyone have any questions of the museum? If you do, please buzz in. Councillor Singh. Linda, if you want to come forward, welcome. I and will. did you want Thank to make you. any sort of opening comment before? Uh, abs we... Absolutely, I would. I'm here representing David Marscal, who I think you know is the CEO of the museum. He wasn't available today, so I'm pleased to be here. I would like to say on behalf of David and actually the other groups here how much we appreciate your attention to our request. Uh, it is very important, and I know that you value the pillars in our community. These are gems in our community, so very much appreciate it. And with your permission, Mayor, I'm just going to, oh, I do have my glasses. I'm all set. Okay, great. So, Councillor Singh. Yeah, thank you. So, for 1-11, and thank you for, for being here. Um, if you look at uh, from 2013 to 2014, there was a 
considerable decrease in uh, revenue earned and the same from sponsorships as well or fundraising. Any contributing factor that you can uh, point out? Or? And you're speaking of the museum? Yes. Could you reference a page for me? 1-11. 1-11. If you look at earned revenue and the fundraising and sponsorships oh, from 2013 to Thank you. 2014. Oh, they, page five. Sorry, I'm going by. Uh, yes, thank you. Your numbering is page a little bit five, different yeah. than I'm me. seeing it differently. On. Yes. Uh, I'm, rather than give you potentially incorrect information, I think I'm best not to attempt to answer financial aspects since our CFO is not available to be here today. Okay. All right, that's okay. Um, for... Page 14 for you. Okay. So 1 20 for us. Um, if you look at uh, Province of Ontario, it, this is just uh, applications that the museum makes on a year after year basis. There's no set funding model with the province. Is that what the case is? Or? Uh, that is correct. In, in fact, I am aware that the, the museum here in downtown Kitchener is underfunded uh, compared to many museums across the province. Okay. And you guys have recognized that and made that ask of the province, I'm guessing? Yes, yeah, okay. we continue to make that ask. And uh, what, uh, what's a funding uh, request to the City of Waterloo and Cambridge for 2015? I'm, I don't have that information with me, I'm sorry. Okay, all right. Okay, that could, thank, thank you very much. So, um, actually, I have one quick question. I hope it's one I can answer. <laughs> yes, I think you would, uh, maybe. Uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, supporting our other arts organizations, and that's why, you know, we're referring to them as mid-tier, mm -hmm. as opposed to established organizations like the museum, which have enjoyed significant funding from the City of Kitchener in kind, rent-free, and then, of course, cash uh, granting as well. If it were to be reduced by 40000 or 39400 what kind of impact would that be? Uh, that's a very good question. Would I the think... doors close? I hesitate to say that we would close the doors in such a magnificent location, right. but I can tell you right now that our cash flow is very, very tight. Um, and uh, if, if I may be so bold as to mention, Please. I know that there were a couple of councillors who asked for a broader breadth of information on the funding the city does provide to the cultural organizations in our community. When you have that information, you will see that although it appears uh, the sustainability funding for the museum is much higher. In other areas, it's much lower. So it balances out differently okay. in the end. I appreciate your comments. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Councillor Gazzola. Yeah, I only have some financial questions. Uh, I'm concerned with uh, the position. Uh, these statements are as of what, June? I'm concerned with the uh, position that you're in, but they're there, there are a couple of other financial questions. I'll uh, have to direct them to your CFO. Uh, may I respond? W would it be helpful if we were to respond with uh, a detailed e email information through the mayor, or how would you like it best that we provide this information? Unfortunately, they're going to make a decision today, so uh, I'm going to have to go without the, without the uh, information. Okay, well, if you want to state your questions, Councillor Gazzola, they, no, they I'm, can... No, uh, I a number of questions. Uh, I'm curious, there's a, uh, a restricted fund of a million eight. Uh, where, does that, where is that sitting? Uh, why aren't they borrowing uh, money from there to carry them through uh, working capital for the first few months? Do you, do you uh, know... the other, another question is, I'm curious as to what the... Uh, what the total grant from the city is, there's a figure somewhere I read of $65,000. This is over and above this year. And, and w I wondered what, what does that 65000 relate to? Okay, and, and further, the building is owned by the city. Is there, is there a rent figure or a forgiven rent figure or, or what have you? So, is is the grant from the city actually uh, two hundred and sixty-five thousand or one hundred and twenty and sixty-five? What is the actual grant for, the, for from the city? Uh, Mayor Rabanovic, yep. I can provide a little bit of that information if you will give me a moment to pick up my BlackBerry. Sure. Please, thank you. 
that be great. And Mr. Chapman, you wanted to throw, add something in at the moment? Through you, uh, Mayor Verbanovic, and perhaps Ms. Fabie can round out my comments. The $120,000 um, is my understanding represents the sustainability funding. The amounts represented in kind are typically for build, building maintenance services. So that would be um, trades, uh, other building maintenance, um, <coughs> costs associated with the facility. Uh, there is no accounting for the free rent. So your question was, is there a, a subsidized or an in-kind rent? That's not reflected or, or factored into these costs. Okay, okay that, and that's sufficient. That's the point, that the, the grant from the city is actually greater than the, the 120 and the 65. But I would let Ms. Fabi add to or correct my comments if they're not complete. Well, I'm not sure I can correct, but I'll certainly add to. My understanding from the information I have is that the Tier 1 or, or cash operating grant that the museum does not receive any funding on, in, in Tier 1 does receive in-kind support of about 68000 If my recollection is correct, I believe the city allocates an amount of somewhere 90 to 95,000, but it's controlled by the city, and that would be for uh, roof repairs, uh, uh, building and facility maintenance. But uh, that full amount has never been used by the museum. I understand. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes, thank you. Is that it, Councillor Yes. Okay, Councillor Fernandez. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, uh, my question is um, related to 1-1, uh, your page 5, and uh, under uh, salaries and benefits, I'm looking at 1,000,000.32998. 1, Can you tell me how many people work for the museum? That should be a very easy answer to provide. Uh, I, I would hazard a guess at 18 or 19. But I may be wrong about that. We have uh, on staff, it's a fairly young staff, who are paid at a fairly low level. So it may actually be more than that. So, uh, okay. Maybe may a higher number. So you, you're, you're saying it could be as many as 20 people, but you've got... It, yes, but the, they're very young staff, almost all of them, other than uh, David Marscal, who are at career entry in their uh, professions. And so they are paid at a fairly low salary level. Okay, and does, does the um, salary, is there any salaries coming out of your general and administrative line? I, am, I would hazard not to can, uh, guess on that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Councillor Yanetsky. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. The um, original question I had was uh, uh, the Art Gallery and the Symphony are asking for 40,000 at this point in time, and, and your group is asking for 120. Mm -hmm. Why do you want 120 at this point in time as opposed to uh, not having 40,000 like everybody else? The, uh, perhaps I could best answer that question by starting with a little bit of the history as I understand it. And I believe that was referenced a little earlier in that uh, the sustainability funding for the museum started at a much later time than it did for the other two organizations under consideration today. And 120000 was seen to be an appropriate amount to, uh, to build up and to sustain the museum. Over time, as we take a look at the, the, amount, the full amount of funding that's provided to the museum, in areas uh, it is um, not funded comparatively to the other organizations, I'm, I want to be very careful we're not trying to set one organization against the other because all are well funded. But for example, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, there is no tier, funding, tier one funding to the museum from the city that our other two sister organizations do receive. So there's an example about, um, in the end, it's equitable, but looking at just this one narrow piece, it appears not to be, so it's a bit misleading. Well, so I guess I'm, an answer to your question, because I didn't really answer it, did I? No, an I'm, I'm, still, your... I'm still puzzled. I mean, there's, a, there's an answer given to a question earlier, mm -hmm. uh, I think it was answered by Councillor Grizzola, that uh, the money that's being paid out uh, right now does not get paid out until after the final budget. Mm -hmm. I, I just assumed that once we pass this today, uh, the check would be in the mail next week. But this is not what I'm gathering. It'll, it'll be another couple of months. Oh. Mr. Wilmer wants to know that. Mr. Mr. Wilmer? Through the chair, the question was about what happens in a typical year. In a typical year, the sustainability funding gets paid out after final budget day. This is atypical. 
So yes, Council is being asked today to approve the sustainability funding in the amount of $200,000 for these three organizations. The check would be cut tomorrow if, if not sooner. Oh, okay, I appreciate that answer. Thank, thank you. So then, um, then when I'm looking at page 120 or page 14, do I gather then it's 120000 that you are receiving is the total amount that you are asking right now? Correct. And then when we do budget day, there's no further amount of money that will be coming from, uh, from the city to, to you? This, I mean, this is, you're getting 100% then, right now. My understanding is that this would be 100% of that sustainability funding, which would be consistent with previous years. Th that's right. Now, whereby the Symphony and the Art Gallery, they're getting 40000 right now, and they'll be getting more later on. Correct. I understand to be the case, yes. Okay, so you're getting the full amount right now, then. From that amount, yes. Yeah, exactly. We will, we will not receive any Tier 1 funding. That's never been a part of the way we've been funded. And I do understand that both the Art Gallery and the KW Symphony do receive some funding from the Tier 1 uh, schedule. Okay, thank you. I think just maybe I, I can ask Mr. Chapman or Wilmer to clarify because I think there is um, an in-kind amount that um, does go to the museum as well, but it's still combined all less than what goes yes. to the other organizations? That's correct. So there are two budgets, one in operating and facilities management, the other in capital that you'll see earmarked for the museum. Uh, so you will approve those with your final budget, but those are not cash grants. Those are all in-kind. And, and that and the money in the operating is because it's our building. Right. Okay. Uh, Councillor Davey. Thank you. Um, specifically on this, is there, would there be any concern if it were, if it were this museum's portion be too deferred for even a short period of time, say the 12th? And before you answer, I, I, I'll, I'll be frank that, you know, the museums come forward with other organizations asking for the money in advance of when we usually do things. It's an atypical year, as I understand. But to be fair, your CEO is in here, your CFO is in here, and I'm being asked to make a decision today based on financial documents. I don't feel like I can make a responsible decision today. I, I'm sorry, I'm not hearing you I'll, very I'll, clearly. I'll repeat. <laughs> I apologize. Okay, so my first question was whether this can be deferred or not. Thank you. Um, to, for at least a week's time, and hopefully uh, either your CEO or your CFO would be able to appear or answer questions of counsel. Uh, because I, to be frank, I think that they should have been here to mm -hmm. answer questions of counsel. Like, I, I appreciate your being here yeah. on their behalf, but uh, so is that an issue? Uh, thank you. I appreciate you understanding the difficult position I'm in as well. It's not being a financial expert. Uh, and uh, certainly that was part of our previous discussion whether or not this part could, should be deferred for a few days. So, uh, and, and I appreciate that council wants a full amount of information that I'm unable to provide. It's my understanding that Mr. Marscal will be back in the city next week. Next. Um, do you know when next week? Like dur during the week? Uh, yes, he would be. Okay, thank you. Okay, Councillor Etherington. <clears throat> Through you, Mr. Chair, I completely agree with uh, Councillor Davey. But just a couple of other general <coughs> questions. Uh, when you talk about less funding to your museum compared to other museums, which museums are you talking about? Uh, from my understanding, again, not as an expert, that that would be comparable to other museums across the province, which would include the Royal Ontario Museum and museums uh, elsewhere. I, d I am not aware of why that is the case, but uh, I'm a, I am aware that our funding is generally less than most museums. But perhaps you would agree that comparing our museum to the Ontario Museum is a bit of a stretch. I'm sorry, I didn't hear all of that. <laughs> I agree with what you're saying, but mm -hmm. that's the point I'm trying mm -hmm. to make. Comparing our museum to the Ontario Museum seems like a bit of a stretch. Well, we think we're just as good, if I can say that, but uh, uh, I, obviously per capita. Okay, fair enough. Um, I'm not trying to create mischief here, but can you tell me 
if any of the money going to the museum will pay for the statue of the Prime Minister that is coming to the museum? I think I can guarantee you it will not. It will not. Thank you. Glad to hear that. Mr. Chair, cramming this approval into a very busy budget day, like, I don't understand it. I don't understand why we're doing that. We're already heading for another 12-hour day. Why do we do this to ourselves? And how are we expected to make an intelligent, informed decision when we don't have the information that Councillor Davy is talking about? I'm, I can't make that decision. Maybe in relation to the orchestra and, uh, and the others here asking for um, these grants, but certainly in relation to the museum, I'd, I'm not in any position to make that decision. Well, and I can't speak to the fact of why there's no staff here. Um, I think Ms. Faby will take that back to her board, and if uh, uh, this council decides to defer this issue, then uh, we'll deal with that one uh, on a separate day. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and Ms. Thank Ms. you, Mayor Verbanovic. If I could mention, I do recall being here I, just a little longer than a year ago, I believe it was in December of uh, last year, 2013, making the same request and uh, council very generously supporting the similar requests that we're making today. So I must admit, I believe Mr. Marscal didn't assume it would engender so many questions as there were fewer last year, but understand that uh, we, have to, we will be respectful and, and um, certainly get answers for you or defer as you choose. Okay. Mr. Wilmer, you wanted to add something? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If Council is inclined to defer, uh, I've just had it confirmed that Mr. Marskell is not back in, in town until after the 13th. So if it were to be to next Monday the 12th, we would need to know that the CFO is available. And otherwise, uh, deferral to the 19th may seem more appropriate. Okay. So, uh, I'm not sure, Linda, whether you know if the CFO is available next Monday. Uh, I, I'm not off the top of my head, but I certainly can check that out for you. I. I, I May I just add one more thing? I feel a little self-conscious that I'm unable to answer your questions uh, because certainly the funding for two other organizations, one of which I sit on the board, uh, is hopefully not in jeopardy. No, no worries at all. We'll, uh, we'll work around that and uh, make sure that we can move things forward uh, appropriately. Uh, I still have one more question for you, uh, Ms. Faby, uh, Councillor Singh. Yeah, Ms. Vivi, this is in no way any defic deficiency on your part. Again, you should have had the support of your CEO or CFO here. So, Thank you. And th uh, this is a comment from me, specifically why this year is atypical or different than yes. obviously in the mm -hmm. past when you guys have come for the same funding and with lesser questions. Uh, per capita funding was put in place last term of council on the initiation of last term of council. Those four years have ended. So we're back again and questioning ourselves, did we set the right model? And that's one of the reasons why I did request staff to bring forward a more inclusive list of how much are we really investing in this community in arts funding so that we have a clear picture. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I, I support Councillor David and I had actually keyed in for asking the same thing. I think it's really difficult for us to make a decision without having that additional information that we've asked to you unfairly mm -hmm. and it needs to be provided by uh, you know, those uh, from the museum. Um, so I, I guess I can take it back to Councillor Davey, but I think the 19th would be more adequate uh, simply because that would give more time and ensuring somebody uh, would be able to be available, if not Dave, then the CFO. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your understanding. Of course. Uh, Councillor Fernandez, is this on the museum? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, and it really is not a question of the, um, the delegation. I was going to make a, a suggestion or a, a, motion, a suggestion of a motion. Uh, what we might want to consider is to uh, support $40,000 as we are doing to the other two pillar organizations at this time and uh, then possibly add additional the additional funding once we've heard from the CFO. So I'm just going to put that out for Council's consideration. Okay, well, <clears throat> Councillor Davy had indicated that he was, I think, bringing a deferral motion forward, so I'll be going to that first. Um, and failing that, we'll come to you. Councillor Gazzola. Yeah, I would like to see all three grants uh, deferred until January the 19th. I, I say there's some pretty complicated information. 
on the financial statements that I'd like to follow up on. If they're deferred to January the 19th, that really isn't out of line of when we've paid out the amounts in the past because our budget would normally be towards the end of January. So if we deal with this on January, with all three of them on January the 19th, uh, the payment can be uh, available that week, which is still in, in, in line with previous years. Okay, I will uh, come back to you as well as uh, Councillor um, Davey. I would have to take his motion first, then I would, uh, you can I guess uh, amend it and add the other two um, to the deferral. Um, but I think uh, we'll continue with the, the questions so we can get all those on the table and, and get them answered so that if the information isn't here, people can, um, can get us the information in time for uh, a deferral, which seems to be, uh, there seems to be some potential consensus building around that. Councillor Singh. Yeah, I should have asked this uh, earlier, but question of timing of staff. Uh, the information I asked for a complete list of the funding that we do provide, could that be available for the 19th? Would staff be able to comprise that? Through, uh, through you, uh, Mayor Zer Mayor, me, Mayor for It's Banovich. okay. <laughs> Been called all sorts of things today. It's all good. Um, yeah, and the, the 19th, as I understand it, is the day that the uh, that council would normally consider its tier one grants. Yeah, and just, as a so result, you would have that information. All, all of the, the, the all of the, or the vast majority of the arts funding for council's consideration will be on the table at that it would, point. It would take some initiative to take some certain out and so that we have more of a clear picture what's towards the arts. There are other organizations in that as well. Oh, so. yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's probably a matter, a relatively simple matter. Excellent. So that information would be available for the 19th. By, okay. by that. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at uh, Mr. May. Mr. May has some concerns. Mr. May? What I just Through said. you, Mr. Chair, uh, I do have some, some concerns with that. We can certainly endeavor to do that. The individuals that would likely do this work are knee deep in uh, tier one grant work right now and preparing for two tier two grants. So uh, there really isn't a whole lot of people that can do this work. And so we can certainly endeavor and try to bring back a report on the 19th. But my level of confidence is not at 90% that we can get the work done. No, I appreciate you being honest. I guess we can always highlight ourselves assuming that we know which organization is what, so we can make that effort. I just wanted to make sure if that information was possible to have. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Ms. Faby. Um, art gallery is next. So, Ms. Medill, welcome. Hi, Shirley. Did you want to say any opening comments first before we Well, first take of questions? all, uh, Happy New Year. And on behalf of the board and staff, we do thank the City of Kitchener for the sustainability funding as well as our Tier 1 budget um, approvals these past years. So I'm ready for any questions that you have. Wonderful. Any questions for Ms. Medill? I guess there are. Oh, there is. Okay. Councillor Yonetsky. Uh, yes, in terms of uh, our page 1-27, and I'm not sure what report you have, which would be page 3, I would assume. One Do you have that? I have that. It's okay, in front good, of me. good. Thanks. Um, there was a question asked in, from the last delegation in terms of their salaries and benefits, and yet when I look at your expenditures, you have no salaries and benefits, and where would that be included in that list of a dozen lines there? In our statements, we actually include them within the department. So where you look at curatorial and exhibitions, the salaries are included in there and you follow with development and fundraising, the salaries are included in there. So we don't um, have the separate line that identifies salaries and benefits. So you said some is in administration? Yes. And the rest? 
Yes, so you look at uh, the expenditures all the way down. So yep. administration would be having salaries, marketing and communications, public programs, development and fundraising, curatorial and exhibitions all have uh, the salaries included. So this would include uh, the salaries of our senior curator, um, you know, executive director, our staff, that's all you know, within curatorial, for example. So what we do is we budget um, with the departments. Okay, I see. So how many staff do you have then? We have 10 core staff members and 11 that are part-time. And the part-time, what we include with our part-time are also our front desk attendants, and they're the ones that are at the visitor services. And we also include the artist educators that um, do our tours and also our workshops. Okay, um, and I appreciate that answer. Then of your expenditures of one2 and a half million, 1.2.5 million, let's say for round figures. Yes. How much of that would be in terms of staff salaries? You're probably looking at 50%, 49 or 50% to the staff salaries. Okay. I think that's the only questions I have. Um, oh, uh, a question on page 1 30, uh, which would be your page 6, uh, works of art. Uh, insurance for 6 million, 6.7 million. Is that how much work you have there in your in your collection? In terms of the value? Yeah. No, it's more than that. Um, it's probably closer to something like uh, um, 11 or 12 million. Um, we cannot insure the entire collection. Um, it would be too costly. Um, way too costly for our budget. And it's not really customary for any gallery to insure the entire collection. So what uh, we often look at are the top, um, the highest um, valued appraisals of the collection. And then we, we insure it. The thing about artworks is that unlike furniture and houses and so forth, they really are not replaced. Um, if you lose an artwork um, through fire or through water damage and so forth, it's uh, irreplaceable. So, you know, if you lose a Tom Thompson painting, uh, the yeah, six million it. isn't going <laughs> to cover it no matter um, what the insurance is. Okay, and I can appreciate that. So then when I look at your, your value either 6.7 or 11 or 12 million, then I go back to your expenditures. Mm -hmm. How much insurance do you pay on the value of those artworks? Uh, there's, there's no line uh, there. The, now, I'm recollecting in my, in my head what I signed off on that, but the insurance um, policy that covers that, um, which doesn't include the water, any water or flood damage since what happened in Alberta, for example, the, the uh, insurance company pulled back, um, is at $6,000. At six thousand dollars. So where would it it's be? It's in that in that round figure. So we would put it under curatorial and exhibition, and it would be um, uh, basically um, under under you know the insurance for the exhibitions and also the insurance of the collection. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. And that would appear to be all of the questions. Okay. Yep. Thanks. You're very welcome. Okay. And uh, next up, then, we have the KW Symphony, and I guess it's uh, Mr. Bennett that's going to take those. Welcome. Good afternoon. Um, I'm pleased to be here addressing for the first time the city um, at this council meeting. Um, I'm new in post, as many of you will have read or have noticed. I started work uh, two months and three days ago, and for that reason, I have brought along with me our interim director of development, Chris Sharp, who is slightly more versed in the detail, but of course, I'm, I hope to be able to answer any questions you would like to put to me. Wonderful, and welcome to the community, Andrew. Um, any questions for the symphony? Councillor Yonetsky. Uh, a question that was raised by Councillor Gazzola about deferring, uh, I mean, one suggestion was made by Councillor Davey about deferring uh, the, the museum issue, but Mr. Uh, Councillor Gazzola also mentioned about deferring uh, the other two, and I forgot to ask that, the museum, sorry, the uh, art gallery people, uh, for another uh, couple of weeks. W what's your comments on that? Is that? Will that impact you, a delay of two more weeks? The short answer is no. I'm sorry? The short answer is no. No. Okay. Um, uh, 
And my other question is on page 1-49, or your page 10 of your uh, submission. Let me know when you've got that. I'm done. You got it? Okay, at the bottom of the page, you've got from 2015, 16, and 17, sorry, 2015 and 16, uh, some lease assessments of about 140, some odd thousand, and then it drops considerably for the following three years. Uh, could you help me understand why there's all of a sudden there's a change? Well, the arrangement to, met, to lease the Conrad Centre, the arrangement, the total arrangement started in 2009 approximately um, and was a, a way to look to defer certain aspects of the lease. The, the, the symphony um, has the pleasure to use the building, but we pay a rent, admittedly not a commercial rent, but a rent which we pay, and we also have renewal costs on the building. So there are, it's a whole package of aspects that were scheduled in this way by my predecessor, and those are the figures that we have signed up for. Okay, appreciate it. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Councillor Davey. Thank you. Just two questions. On page, uh, I guess it would be page two on yours. It's page 1-41 on ours. Um, it's showing ticket sales subscriptions dropped from 2013 to 2014 by $40,000 and single ticket sales by from $230,000 to $92,000. Can you characterize or explain why, if there's anything behind that that I'm missing, or is that just a drop in sales? Can you just re-refer me, because I understand Certainly. the question, but the exact, the exact figures you're referring to? Sure. Uh, I think it's page two on your report, unless you have ours. I have yours. Yes. Okay, so it'll be 1-41. 41. Right. And it's the second line down. There's a, yep. I'm just looking at your, I'm, I'm just curious about your ticket sales overall. Subscriptions yep. are down about $40,000 yep. and single tickets look like they're down w well over $100,000. Um, the, the crucial um, point to say is that the symphony organizes its season around what it thinks it can sell. Um, in other words, we adapt significantly the number of concerts to the the market and our experience in the immediately previous years. And so there will always be a variation in the number of concerts, in particular what we call special concerts, which are the ones with the highest risk and the highest cost involved. And so you would see a variation in income project projected and indeed expenditure that relates particularly to those concerts uh, uh, consistent with an artistic plan in other words, the fact that single tickets goes down does not imply that the number of single tickets or subscriptions sold per concert goes down. In fact, all our trends until recently, until the last few, the last few days, are of an increase in our per concert subscription and an increase in our per concert single ticket sales, which of course is the most important issue. Okay, so I, I can't find it here, but I, presumably then that would track down in terms of Expenditure. saving. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Exactly. Um, and last question, you may not know offhand, but uh, under grants on that same page, yep. it looks like uh, they reduced from 701,000 to 683. Do you know, do you recall where that shortfall came from? Um, I'm gonna defer, because that that's a historical question. I do need to, to ask Chris Sharp to respond to that. Very good. Hi. Hi, welcome. Um, I believe that was a one-time grant uh, from uh, Ontario Arts Council. So that ran, that ran out, it ran its course in that. Oh, no, actually it would be two lines above that. Ontario Arts Council is below. It says, it specifically says region of Waterloo and cities of Kitchener, Waterloo and Cambridge. And it shows about a... Old, oh, I see. Yeah. Roughly 14,000. If, if you don't know, it's not material to my decision. I'd just yeah, like to know. I, I couldn't, could give you the exact reason for that drop. Okay, would you be able to follow up with staff and have that, that answer mm -hmm. forwarded to us? Absolutely. Thank you. Councillor Yonetsky, you had a, another question? Yeah, one question I forgot to ask, uh, going to page 1-44. Uh, <clears throat> in capital assets, and there's a number of uh, assets that you've, uh, 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 that are outlined, and then a dep depreciation rate, I guess. I'm trying to understand that musical instruments are owned by the individual musicians. And Not all of them. I'm sorry? With respect, not all of them. Uh, not any, all of them? Any symphony orchestra will have a situation in which, uh, let's say, typically a violinist or a cellist owns their own instrument, but areas such as percussion, um, so often double basses and the harp, for example, will, will actually be owned by the individual orchestra. That is common practice internationally. Okay, so just a handful of instruments. But, but 
relatively speaking, yes. Oh, okay. I appreciate it. So I just wondered how, you know, I thought they were all owned individually, and I always wondered how the percussion would own all the timps and everything else. So, okay, thank you. Okay, that uh, appears to be all of the questions. Thank you. So, Councillor Davey. Thank you. Um, Mike, I'll be frank, my questions, I'm satisfied with the questions from the Art Gallery and the Symphony, so I would not be deferring those. I'm prepared to approve them. Uh, I would move deferral of the museum. I, w I think I'm going to give them the option here. I think I'm, I'm, I'd like to defer it to next Monday, if uh, knowing full well that you may not have the available staff ready, which ca in which case we'll just defer it the following week. So I would move approval of the Art Gallery and the Symphony and deferral of the museum to next Monday, the 12th. Okay, I'll uh, take that motion. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Ioannidis. Councillor Gazzola, you're next. So I gather my amendment isn't a friendly amendment to defer all three of them to January the 19th. Okay, very good. Thank you. Are you moving an amendment or no? I, well, yeah, I guess I will try to. I will, uh, uh, I'd like to move a deferral of all three items to uh, January the 19th, which well, would, would be discussed on the same day as we discuss all of those other uh, grants. Okay, so there's a, a mover and a seconder. And I'll ask for a recorded vote on that. For the amendment for all three, okay. Uh, Councillor Yonetsky, you want to speak to it or? Uh, no. Oh, okay. No, I think we, you, we're going to deal with the amendment, which would be to um, def to add the other two to the to the um, deferral list. Okay, so if you're in support of deferring all three, you would vote yes. If you're not in support of deferring all three, but want to just defer the one and deal with the other two, you would vote no. Uh, uh, the date that uh, Ms. that uh, Councillor Davy has indicated is next Monday, if uh, if if it's doable, and if it's not, then the following week. Are you assuming the same dates? You said the 19th. So actually, he would be the 19th for all three. So the deferral would be the 19th on all three. Okay. So recorded vote has been called. on Councillor Gazzola's uh, amendment. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion uh, does not carry, so we'll now go to Councillor Davies' motion. Recorded vote as well, Councillor Davies? Okay. No, oh, Councillor Fernandez, you wanted to speak? Yeah, I, I just Sorry, just one second. Hang on. Go ahead, Councillor Fernandez. I just wondered where where my motion would fall in with with Councillor Davies' motion because I had made the suggestion that I wanted to support all of them by forty thousand dollars. Would would I be would that be an amendment to Councillor Davies' um, motion? It would be actually a motion to defer. I think would take precedent, uh, so I would have so that would have to fail, and then we could come and deal with um, a motion. Your motion. Okay. Mr. Wilmer. And, and normally I wouldn't weigh in on on procedural matters. However, there may be an opportunity here because I understand Councillor Fernandez's intent is to defer eighty thousand dollars of the museum request, so that may be seen as, as an amendment that, is, uh, that has a similar intent. So defer 80,000 and, and deal with 40,000 question. Okay, Councillor uh, Fernandez, are you asking that I split these up? Yes. Okay, so um, motion to, to split uh, can happen, um, I think. Uh, Mr. Clerk, is that correct? Through you, uh, Mayor Verbanvik. Um As indicated by Mr. Wilmer, uh, an amendment to change the dollar amount for the deferral would be in order. Uh, so it could be a deferral of 80000 
and then another vote to vote for in favor of the approving 40,000 at this time. Okay, okay. Uh, Mr. Da Councillor Davey. In terms of process, what happens if I defer the second 40,000? Wouldn't that take precedence, same thing? Or the, sorry, the remainder? Okay, just checking. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to deal with them individually. Um, I'm going to start off, Councillor Singh, you have a procedural question? It's uh, relevant to the date that Councillor Davies is setting, the, the 12th, and that's why I had asked staff before to, um, obviously the information for what we are giving out to other, our organizations would be part of our grants application process on the 19th. Will we have that package so that we ourselves can uh, look ourselves to see exactly how much is being given out? Well, I think what we heard from Mr. May is he may or may not be No, able the package will be available for the 19th, uh, Mayor Vrenovich. So we ourselves could be, would be able to take a look at it. It's just if the, uh, the deferral date is for the 12th, I'm asking staff, would the package be available for prior to the 12th date? Mr. Wilmer? Probably not. Through the Mayor, it's my understanding that Mr. Marskell would prefer to be present for the discussion of the museum. So it would be the museum's preference that, that it does not be considered until the 19th if it's going to be deferred today. Okay. Okay. So then the motion would be that this simply does come back on the 19th. Thank you. But I will still deal with them individually. Um, and so I will f start off with the, uh, the art gallery and uh, we'll deal with that 40,000. No, we didn't. We haven't approved anything yet. We simply dealt with um, the, the deferral of everything. So um, I'll deal with the art gallery. And um, it's been moved by Councillor Davies, second by Councillor Ioannidis. All those in favor? Yep. 40,000 for the art gallery. OK, that's fine. Yeah, and I see a couple other people want to make on. Do you want to buzz, buzz in? Councillor Gazzola, Councillor Yanetsky, you were first, actually. No, I, actually, I was going to ask you a question, but you answered. Okay, Councillor okay, Council Fernandez. Oh, sorry, I didn't. I, okay, okay Councillor Gazzola, you are up. Okay, I, I'm not going to be supporting these, these grants, and it goes back. Uh, there's a little history on my part. Uh, when we looked at this issue a number of years ago, uh, I totally agreed with increasing the amount of grants that we were giving. Uh, there was a, a, an excellent case made that we needed to be putting more money into arts and cultural type of grants. It was my expectation at that time that that money was going to be available for all organizations and especially newer organizations that were struggling with, with staying alive. That was, I don't know how many years, that's four or five years ago. And over the years, the bulk of the money has gone to three organizations. And, and when it comes down to other uh, good organizations, organizations starting up, there's no money available for them. So I, I'm, uh, I'm not opposed to the, having the money available for, for arts organizations, I just, I want to see it shared more equitably. So on that basis, when the vote comes, I will not be voting in favor of it. Okay, Councillor galloway Sila. Yeah, I just think it's also important to remember that um, this is kind of that pivotal year. And we have staff working on the review along with all of our counterparts throughout the region um, to really look at this issue and look at this specific funding. And then that review will inform our decision moving forward in, in 20, uh, for a 2016 budget. So um, as has been stated, this is kind of the, the, the standstill, let the review happen, let's really look at it in depth and then look at um, what opportunities we have with this 1% per capita funding alone um, and whether or not it is the best way to put it towards the pillar organizations as we've been doing over the last couple of years um, or if it's better invested elsewhere within arts and culture. So I think we'll have those answers throughout the course of, of this coming year. So I think it's important to, to continue to fund these organizations this year as is. Any additional comments? 
Okay, if not, uh, I'll make, that, that's fine on each one. Um, I will make uh, my comments. I uh, am uh, supportive of uh, funding all three of these organizations uh, as I was uh, at, the, uh, at the region as well. Um, I believe that, um, as Councillor galloway Sealock just indicated, uh, we are in the midst of a process, and I think it's important that um, we, we send some, some, some clear messages um, to the, the, the arts community, both in terms of uh, what I'll say are, are some of our, our legacy or, or foundational uh, organizations, as well as some of the emerging and, and as they've been labeled, mid-career mid organizations going forward. I think um, it, it only adds to the, the, some of the difficulties and concerns that exist uh, and the tensions that exist within the arts community right now uh, if, we aren't, um, if we aren't clear in, in our messaging and our support of these, uh, of these organizations for this year while the review goes forward. And, uh, and ultimately, we will uh, have to deal with that issue, this issue later in the year uh, and what the ongoing levels of funding should be. In the case of uh, the museum, uh, I, I do support um, a deferral um, in light of the fact that there weren't uh, people here uh, at a staff level to answer questions that are appropriately answered by staff. I think it uh, only makes sense for us to do that um, so that we can, uh, we can deal with um, those issues uh, at, the, uh, at the subsequent meeting on the, uh, on the 19th. Uh, so I, won't, uh, I will be supporting the deferral of, in that particular instance. So as I said, we'll start off with the art gallery. A recorded vote has been called. All those in favor of 40,000 for the art gallery? All in favor? Opposed? One opposed, that's carried. We'll now deal with the symphony. All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. So there is a motion to um, motion to defer uh, on the table. I'll uh, deal with that motion, and if that motion doesn't succeed, then I'll come forward to uh, uh, you, Councillor Fernandez, for your alternative motion. So um, we can vote now, please. Yep. Deferral for the full amount until the 19th. All in favor? One, sorry, all opposed? One opposed, that motion carries as well. So we'll come back on the 19th for that issue. Thank you very much uh, to all of you. Uh, oh, yep, yeah, the bylaws. So somebody want to move the bylaws? Moved by Councillor, uh, sorry? Sorry, did I miss a part? Oh, sorry, and uh, we need the uh, motion for the, the final clause of the recommendation to bring that back to final budget. Moved by Councillor um, galloway Seelock, second by Councillor Davey. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Motion for the bylaws. Moved by Councillor Ioannidis, second by Councillor Yanetsky. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. And we'll adjourn and move back into finance. <laughs>